What up internet, this is Eugene from Worker Bee Supply and today we're excited to bring you a book review of astronaut Scott Kelly's new memoir, Endurance, A Year in Space, A Lifetime of Discovery. Let's get to it. So I love everything related to space and I know many of you do as well. In fact, our latest print is actually a space print, so you should go check that out. But Scott Kelly's book, I remember actually when he first went, uh, if you don't know much about him, he's an American astronaut uh, who spent a year living aboard the International Space Station. Uh, he actually has a twin brother who was also being studied at the same time here on Earth. And there's a lot of really interesting research that came from it, but it's always fascinating to hear a first-hand account of what it's like to be an astronaut. This book is written in an interesting way where there's two competing narratives. The first is him and his time aboard the International Space Station. So what it's like to spend a year in space. What are the things that they work on, the difficulties they encounter. Um, and then on a broader scope, that's interweaved with what it's like to become an astronaut, how he decided to become an astronaut, why. Uh, so I'd love to dive into a few of these and kind of share my key takeaways from the book and why I think uh, you should read it as well. So to get out of the way, like. I've read a couple astronaut biographies now, and let's just say astronauts are astronauts, they're not writers. So if you're expecting this like sort of riveting account, page turner, probably not quite that. Uh, the content of the book and the story that he tells is much more interesting than the way he tells it. Uh, so if you start off and it feels a little stiff, don't let that dissuade you from finishing the book. And I think there's a lot of assumptions about what it takes to become an astronaut, that this book kind of dispels those myths. And there's a lot of really great lessons for everyone who's not, not necessarily astronauts in training. Um, so I think uh, to start, it's really cool to see how he became an astronaut. Uh, I have my notes here. So basically, Scott Kelly was not a great student in school. He kind of like barely passing his grades, was really bored, didn't really care, would just check out a lot. But I think at one point he, he read another book that you should read to find out what it is, really focused him and gave him something to work hard for, which I think is what a lot of people struggle for. They, it's not that they can't work hard or they can't be ambitious, it's just they don't really have that thing. Either no one's revealed it to them, they haven't come across it themselves, uh, but I think it really stops a lot of people. So seeing how his journey from kind of like failing grades to, you know, wasn't like a standout student and then slowly through sheer will and determination, got back on it, solved one problem at a time and just kind of like kept chipping away at his goal of becoming a, a fighter jet pilot and then an astronaut eventually as well. So I think the sort of like single-mindedness that led him to becoming an astronaut is really interesting. And just the concept of having a long-term goal, but only working on the next immediate problem, you know, not letting the kind of grandness of this goal dissuade you and distract you. Um, another cool part of it is him training to become an astronaut and the kind of bureaucracy associated with NASA and the International Space Station in general. Uh, so everything from how assignments are given and the interview process and the kind of questions they get asked and weird tests they have to perform, sort of like what it takes to apply as well and what NASA looks for in an astronaut is probably not at all what you think. Uh, you know, it's not purely dependent on like only accepting geniuses today. So that was really revealing. I think a lot of us assume things are a lot harder than they are and we end up creating all these roadblocks in our minds when if we just like went ahead and you know reached out to someone we thought was out of our reach or applied to a job that we thought was beyond ourselves, we'd probably actually get it more often than not. Um, so I think that lesson is really great. And there's like a bigger narrative as well about all the countries that are involved in the International Space Station, right? So specifically the, the two powerhouses are US and Russia and I'm of Soviet descent from Ukraine originally. Um, and like a lot of the weird nuances of how they do things differently and what they value, what they spend money on, what they prioritize uh, is really interesting and really kind of paints a nice picture of the cultural differences uh, between those countries. And then he talks a lot about life on the International Space Station. So what do astronauts do day to day? I think most people think they're kind of like, yeah, we're being astronauts exploring. But it's really just like a lot of uh, experiments and maintenance. Uh, like the toilet breaking is like one of the biggest problems that 
happens on a regular basis that they have to deal with. So like, you know, you spend decades training, going to school, learning every single field, and then most of your time is spent fixing toilets, uh, which is kind of hilarious. Their schedules are super timed, like to the minute. Um, and they're in constant contact with people on the ground that are working them through every experiment, experts from every single field. So anything they need to do, an expert can be uh, brought in to kind of help walk them through it. Uh, it'll be interesting as more and more like augmented reality stuff happens, how that relationship will change um, and to what degree, you know, it'll offset the training. Also like how isolated they are uh, at times, you know, something happened on one of Scott Kelly's earlier missions where someone in his family was shot and he was in space and couldn't do anything about it other than sort of watch the news. What it's like dealing with family members, you know, your rebellious, uh, teen daughter who you're trying to rebuild a relationship but then you have to leave for a year. What it's like doing basic things with no gravity, you know, we see science fiction movies where people just like walk off the spaceship and onto the new planet, but you literally can't move. Like if you've been in space for a long time, your muscles start degrading, you lose your vision quite a bit. You constantly have like a fluey type head symptoms where, you know, uh, your sinuses are swollen, your brain's kind of muddy. Uh, so it's not quite so simple when they come to dock on the space station. You know, you don't just flip open the hatch and have like some steam roll out. It takes hours and sometimes even days to even open the hatch to make sure everything's sealed properly. Everything is safe for the astronauts to come through because obviously one tiny mistake, uh, not only the new arrivals, uh, the spacecraft will be compromised, but the whole space station could be destroyed. And there's a lot of things with like long-term space flight, which is one of the main reasons for this mission is to figure out, you know, we're talking about sending people to Mars, um, which is like years round trip. Um, so what happens to human bodies when they spend that much time in space? To what extent do the symptoms like degrade? Do they stop? Do they come back? I think some of my key takeaways was that you could really achieve a lot more than you think. Um, and that's sort of the theme of Scott Kelly's life is just trying to like push for these ridiculous accomplishments. Not like in the sense of like, I wanna be a super successful person, but he's just obsessed with doing things that are truly, really difficult. And that's what gets him excited. You know, if it's like an easy task, he's not gonna study because he doesn't care for it. But if it's something really difficult, uh, that's what gives him passion. And that's what gives him energy to pursue these tasks. Uh, similarly, like space is hostile. Um, the, there's an account of several spacewalks that they go on and it seems so peaceful when you watch it on like NASA television. And there's a part of the story where he describes first coming out uh, of the airlock in his first spacewalk and seeing the surface of the ISS just pelted with holes from meteorites striking it. Uh, some going right through to the insulation, bumps everywhere, scratches and him just having this moment of realization like, wow, I'm in this suit and like this is what's happening in the space station. What if a thing happens? What if a meteorite strikes me right now? Uh, like I'm gone instantly. Um, and they spend like 14 hours outside of the space station in these suits uh, working on things. So it's pretty incredible. Um, just like it doesn't look dangerous, but just how it is one of the most dangerous things human beings do. The other thing is like the idea of getting to Mars is like so feels like so within reach. Um, and you know, you hear Elon Musk going on about it, like, oh, we're going to do it in like 30 minutes. It's really complicated. And you know, the getting the technology there, like rockets and stuff is one thing, but then being able to come to terms with the consequences of sending people there. Uh, is like a whole other story, you know? And I think a lot of these experiments of trying to figure out just the effects of our bodies uh, of, from long-term space flight is gonna be the huge stumbling block. Uh, that, and obviously the insane amount of funding that is needed uh, to, to accomplish that. I think the experiments on the ISS, also people really undervalue um, and the huge impact they have here on Earth. Being able to remove gravity as an element um, from a lot of these experiments really opens you up to gain new knowledge uh, and that knowledge is used to design better products, healthcare, 
uh, life support systems that are used on Earth every day. For example, they developed a water filtration system that converts urine into fresh drinking water. And now that technology is being used here on Earth for places that don't have uh, water systems and they need to be sort of self-sustained. A lot of these closed loops are really effective here on Earth, not to mention kind of like huge biology experiments, physics experiments that really get us closer to understanding uh, the fundamental things that sort of dictate our universe. And then finally, I think the, it really drives home the idea of how amazing the International Space Station is and what an international project it truly has been to, to build it. Um, we have an outpost circling the Earth in space and while well, that's crazy and we should all be super proud of this accomplishment that humanity has created and it's our first step out into the rest of the universe, our solar system and then the universe and beyond. So I think just taking a moment, uh, you know, watching uh, launches, watching uh, the landings back on Earth, um, perhaps watching more moon missions in the not too distant future. I think take a moment and be really proud of what we have accomplished as uh, humanity because this is unprecedented and we truly are kind of like taking those first steps right now. And I think all of us together to just value that more and see the long-term benefits of doing things like that. Um, a lot of us forget day to day that there's people out in space floating above us, you know, doing circles around the earth uh, while we're having lunch. And these people are risking their lives to help uh, advance us, all of us together. So I think for that reason alone, you should really read this book and kind of to get a concrete idea of what that's like. And yeah, if you're interested in it, there's a link down below for you to check out, check out the book but I would really highly recommend it. The book is Endurance, A Year in Space, A Lifetime of Discovery by Scott Kelly. I hope you enjoyed this book review. We're hoping to do more. We listen to a lot of audiobooks. Let me know what your favorite book, if you've read any other books uh, about space, space travel. Um, I read, the only other one really is Commander Chris Hatfield's uh, biography, which I feel like was not quite is a bit more romanticized, I guess, than uh, this one. So definitely, I'll, I'll link to both of them below, but definitely highly recommend checking out uh, Scott Kelly's uh, Endurance. Pace.